Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Brühl and Kier. A wow flutter meter type 6203. Let's get a little bit of light. It is really, really beautiful in a super good condition. I don't know exactly what we can use this for today because we don't really play with uh, records or um, tape recorders and stuff like that. But it's still interesting to uh, to see what kind of instrument this is and uh, how it's made and what it's actually measuring. So the idea is you use the test oscillator that is a 3.15 kilohertz sine wave. So you record this on any kind of moving media or something like that. And then you play it back into the test. And then it will tell, is there any percentage in drift? Or is the, the output tone FM modulated? And what kind of FM modulation that is in, in, um, in the how much and how fast? This is uh, happening and this way you can uh, probably adjust your um, tape recorder or prove that something mechanical is wrong with this machine or it's probably already super super good and you're happy i don't know what <laughs> what you want definitely not a uh, wanted thing to have uh, unstable playback speeds so let's try and uh, look a little bit into how this uh, this works. First, let's look at the test oscillator output. And here is uh, 3.15 kilohertz. And it is, of course, super duper spot on. The frequency is right here. It's to the last digit accurate. And that is, of course, because this is a crystal oscillator and dividers and filters and whatnot. So, of course, this is super, super accurate. And we can change levels into three different voltages so far so good but we can also enable a plus minus one percent error and if you look at the scope now the frequency is changing one percent about five times a second it looks uh, like this on the meter here because it's um, of course changing. So this meter is also responding to, to this 1% error because this oscillator is also used as the reference inside this instrument to read out everything. So when you enable this 1% error, obviously the meter is also going to show exactly 1%. So that is a good uh, test that we know the instrument is uh, up and running, and uh, so far we are happy. Uh, let's turn off the modulation, and let's take this cable from the test oscillator and put it into the input of the instrument. So now it's actually measuring something that is accurate. We can select between two different uh, frequency, uh, frequency standard frequencies uh, if we go to three kilohertz, we of course have an error of a constant drift. But let's go back to the correct frequency. The oscillator is generating 3.15. There's no way you can change that. Um, the flutter range is now in manual range. You can also put it in auto range. And then you'll see here the range now go to the finest range we can also put it in manual and then we can just change the range as you can see here and there. I don't know if that is easy to see with all this light let me see if I can move this so now it says 1% full range okay so we got some uh, filter options uh, here uh, there's an external filter and that is in or out like this 
uh, I will show you guys uh, the back panel. So there's a, an output and an input for an external filter. So since there's nothing connected on the on the rear of this unit, that means of course we cannot uh, enable the external filter. So but we can play with the internal filters, and that we got th we got three different settings for the internal filter. Uh, the problem is that it's not written here, but it should be five hertz in the top, three fifteen and one thousand. And this is the drift counter. Uh, time. So if we put it into uh, three seconds, it will average over three seconds and then it will show a much more stable uh, readout. I think all this is uh, much easier to see if we put in an external uh, frequency source. So let's see if I can show this all at the same time. Um, I try to put the instruments as close to each other as possible. I've now connected the input to a signal generator and this is 3 kilohertz let's uh, select a 3 kilohertz as the measuring mode or the standard for that 3 kilohertz 1 volt RMS and then enable the output I got no modulation so far so of course it's gonna go to zero um, the, the flutter is gonna go to zero and the drift is going to go to zero if everything is uh, perfectly fine so let's just start playing with the frequency um, setting. So this is reading out in percent. Okay, fine. So that means that this digit should be percent. If I put this to three, so it's 303, it should be 1%, right? See, it says 1.00% drift. So, I mean, it's super super accurate <laughs> that is amazing but it's just counting the difference in frequencies from an internal crystal and uh, and counting uh, i mean of course it's going to be that accurate right so let's put the frequency back to three kilohertz let's uh, hit modulation and then type fm frequency um, modulation frequency let's take five hertz and the deviation let's take 30 hertz so 30 hertz is uh, the frequency error so that is now one percent wouldn't you say um and five hertz is the modulation frequency right so we are now all the way up here in the in the flutter filter so that is the 5 hertz filter and see this is 1% of a flutter. So, so far so good. We're quite happy. It reads just a tiny little bit uh, low, but uh, that is possibly uh, within specifications. So let's try and change the modulation frequency from 5 hertz four three now you see the needle move two hertz oh look at that huh so this reveals the frequency response of this filter let's go back to five and then let's try and crank the frequency a little bit up and then see what happens six seven eight nine ten see we get a lower indication again so this is the frequency response of that filter. Okay, let's go back to five. Let's change the frequency filter to 315. Now oh, the meter actually got a little bit higher. Now let's try and play with the frequency. Ooh, nothing. Okay, let's, that was 30. 100. 200 and 300. And then you see something, right? Let's crank it up to 1,000. And again. And here's 1,000. So, the filters also work. That is so cool. Okay, we could also go back to 5 hertz. And we could also play with 
uh, the flutter range. So that means uh, my frequency deviation. So, so far that is a 30 hertz. Like that. And that is 1%. I am in manual mode. Okay, so, so if 30 hertz is 1%, then 3, 3, Hertz should be 0 0.1 percent, right? Now we are in 0 0.1 um, full range, and that is all right, isn't it? So let's try. It. So that was three hertz uh, modulation. Let's go down to two, one. Now we are in the finest, yeah finest range so that will be 0.03 percent right there and we are one percent uh, one hertz of modulation let's try and go down to 100 millihertz of deviation and here we go yeah i think this is yeah 50 50 millihertz yeah, thirty. Oh, I think we can't we can't see anymore here, right? I think we hit the the noise floor at about what? Yeah, twenty millihertz of deviation on a three kilohertz uh, sine wave signal. Uh, that is the noise floor of uh, this unit. It can't detect any more than that. So let's go and see what's inside. Also, oh, that is the usual. Super easy to open BNK cases. Just remove one screw and then slide out. I kind of like that idea. We can also look a little bit on the rear panel. Input and output for tape recorder, external filter, DC output of full scale meter. Okay. Oh, by the way. The mains fuses, look at that, 40 milliamps. And when I got this unit, of course it didn't work. One of the fuses uh, was blown. I don't have a 40 milliamp fuse, so I'm so sorry I changed the blown one to a 100 milliamp fuse. And the other one I kept uh, 40 milliamps. I, I mean, this is very close to um, <laughs> power consumption of this instrument so i would really think uh people with this instrument they will once in a while experience uh, blown fuses i think it should have been around 100 milliamps um, so you don't need to go and replace the fuses all the time so anyway let's see if we can look a little bit into this uh instrument it is full of digital uh ic's Obviously, um, we got a lot of uh, counters and stuff like that for all the frequency reads out and, and such. Also, this flat, flat cable handle, this super, super nice LED uh, displays. So they are located up here. And we got some bulbs to light up the meter. Oh, yeah, look at that. That one is the big big crystal we got some really big old style dip switches uh-huh and the transformer is here we got some power supply parts down there and that will be all the good good analog stuff up amps and filters and uh, stuff like that and if you look a little bit closer on the trimmers look at the design of this you can easily access all of them from the top you don't see this detail in a lot of instruments actually sometimes you see them mounted all over the place and they're rotated up and down and left and right and whatnot and sometimes they just oh let's drill some holes in the back and the front and the bottom and whatnot so you can access the trimmers but here oh no they used their brains from the day one and figured out we put all the trimmers so it's easy to service 
And another detail. Look how the the trimmers there centered. They're all in the middle, except this one is just a little bit to the left of the middle. I mean, <laughs> that is, I, I just love it when people do it right. That is something. Yeah, let's let's try and get the other sides off and have a little bit better look. Let's look a little bit in more detail on the PCBs. Here is a week 4077. So it's probably from 1977. There's also a, a number here, XC1521 and set D0194. This does not look like a BNK number. And also this logo is not a BNK logo. All right? And by the way, it's also the the power supply also got those numbers. And oh yeah, here's the the crystal oscillator and that funny funny dip switch. Oops, there's another trimmer at the bottom. Oh no. And it's actually also in the center position. So far, so good. I checked the date codes on a lot of those ICs and they're also 77. So, I mean, this confirmed my idea about the age of this instrument. Set M0050 and then this XC, I mean, I don't know exactly what is that. And it's the same with the display board as well. Oh yeah, there's actually another thing I wanted to say in the in some of the previous videos as well uh, about uh, uh, the cases, the mechanics and I kind of like it this far, but if you for some reason need to remove the aluminium frames, you see the problem? There's a hidden screw here. So you need to dissect the entire instrument to be able to access that screw because it's accessed from the front. Not like here on the back, they're super easy to access, they're not hidden on the back. But because they really insist on hiding screws on the front panel, it becomes a nightmare of dimensions if you really need to remove the, the aluminum frames for whatever reason. And in some of the other products I've been playing around with uh, from Brüller and Care, uh, I really, really needed to access those screws and it's just a pain. So, so much for beauty. You can see there's a, a two pieces design here, right? So there's this beautiful front plate. And obviously this is mounted somehow, probably just glued in, right? So you have to unscrew everything here and then, oh man, that is one big pain. So yeah, this is what it consists of, this, uh, absolutely beautiful instrument i'm super happy that it works that easy i didn't have to do anything but just replace a fuse and uh, then we're good to go i can't even find a broken capacitor or anything i want to poke around with i can i can actually see a few hand solderings or i don't know maybe they just saw some solderings they were not ha too happy with so they just got a little bit of extra soldering but that's kind of all i can see i really wanted to show you the led displays so i took out this display pcb as well and look at those beautiful beautiful leds 
LED seven segments and they're by the way multiplexed so here's the driver and the resistors and all that kind of stuff for that and the LEDs in here they are super super tiny so there's a magnifying glass kind of design here you can see the magnification factor here is just enormous and the fun thing about this the way that this magnifies is also when you look at the numbers it appears to be tilted when you look from the side like this it's kind of just tilting the display as well let me try and turn this on and see if i can demonstrate that let's see if i can demonstrate this we got too much light here yeah 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 look at that so if you look at the can you see it's kind of almost like it's How the heck can you read this number from this huge? We've got tons of light destroying the view, but it's just, it's almost like it's following the viewer. It is just crazy. There was actually one thing I really wanted to change. That is the light intensity of the plus minus sign here because they're so so dim you can't look through here but i think i'm gonna go and clean the acrylic here and then it's probably going to be more readable but it's just almost not readable maybe i can take this apart and change the led in here because it's so so dim you see let's look a little bit on the data sheet uh, or the manual for this wow and flutter meter so they say a little bit here about the measurement or range I don't know if that is, <laughs> is really possible um, yeah what about the frequencies blah 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 I wanted to show you this and this is exactly why it's so super super accurate right because we got a, a crystal oscillators dividers and all that and uh, so this is the test modulation that affects everything and uh, here's a frequency counter with error in relation to uh, this input either the 3 or 3.15 so that's also uh, super smart and this shows the external uh, filter connectors on the back and here you can change between between the three different uh, filter ranges and uh, yeah the range uh, thing and the meter and all that kind of stuff so that's uh, what there is to it really it also shows here about the what is drift and what is a wow so here's 0 0.5 to 10 with a peak of 5 hertz and then the the flutter range and all that and let's see here i think it's actually easier to see here uh it's actually 4 hertz <laughs> peak uh, if you look at this curve but i measured it to be around 5. so i think this uh, curve is exactly uh what i see and then i also tested the 315 and the 1000 uh, range if you want more details this was super super easy to find uh, online An example of use blah 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 stereo record you can of course is, if you want to uh, use this with a, <laughs> with a record player you need a special record with this uh, audio tone recorded on this right but it's much easier with a tape recorder you can just record and then play it back and here we go with the specifications i think that was more or less what i wanted to show you guys thank you very much for watching and please come again tomorrow